We will give you royalties for every barrel of oil we produce from your land. This farmer says, I have nothing to gain and everything to lose. Go for it. They begin to dig. This is during the introduction of the spindle top. And oil came out of the land, gush everywhere. Four major oil companies was produced out of that land. And they were able to produce over 100,000 barrels of oil. The fact of the matter is, did he become a millionaire instantly when he bought the land? Or did they have to dig in the basement of the earth and bring out a substance to the marketplace to realize what it was worth? question is, what do you have in the basement? What do you have in the basement? Here's a bit of truth, ladies and gentlemen. We were born to be rich. We were born to win. We were already wealthy when we came into the place, into this world. Everything that is physical comes from a non-physical place. If you close your eyes right now, and cover it, and you see total darkness, that is exactly where we come from. But we are everything. We are proof that the universe is conscious of itself. Is that heavy enough? Many people use universal laws in ways that those laws are working against them because they were never told they, they were born with power. They were never told to know and learn about the natural seven laws of the universe. They were never taught that what you think about, you bring about. I had to learn it the hard way. And guess what? Everyone in here is gonna have to learn it the hard way. Your children and your children's children is gonna have to learn it the hard way whether they're as children or as an adult. Unfortunately for me, I had to learn it as an adult. Not too long ago, when I came here from Washington, D.C., homeless. Didn't know where I was gonna live. Did not know where I was gonna work. Did not know how my business was gonna take off here. But let me rewind just a little bit. I have skills in the IT industry. I have over 20 years of IT. I can put a computer together blindfold. Okay. I had no business being from job to job for 11 years in Washington, D.C. I couldn't blame the industry, but at the time I did. But as long as I kept blaming the industry or blaming the companies, my situation got worse. And as a matter of fact, my situation got so worse, so bad, that I ended up being laid off five times in four years. August of 2012, my mom passed away on a Monday. And I'm gonna to get to you about that because MIT did a study that states that most people who suffer a heart attack suffers that heart attack on a Monday morning between 5 to 10 a.m. She died 9.05 a.m. on a Monday morning in the city of Scotland Neck, North Carolina. And she died doing her passion. But as I talk about her death, I'm in Washington, D.C. I get the news. I'm crying. I'm hurt because I'm not in North Carolina to be with her on the time and day that she passed away. But I had a commitment as well at a job with a major law firm in Washington, D.C. at the time that I had to go to work on a Tuesday morning only to hear my manager call me to the conference room. I'm thinking it's gonna be a big sympathy party. I walk into the conference room and hear this. Mr. Lee, we are so sorry to hear about your mom. By the way, this is not why we called you here. We have to let you go. Oh, terrible. Tell it. Folks, can you imagine what my feeling was like at the moment? I'm already hurt. All I'm looking for is somebody to hold.
phone me all of looking for somebody to say I'm so sorry to hear about your mom. What can we do to help? What can we do for you? I didn't get that. I got a call from a gentleman who actually brought me into this speaking business. His name is Mr. Les Bryant. And he said, Jay Lee, everybody grieves differently. Take the time that you need. And when you come back, you're going to be Michael Jordan, and I'm going to be your Phil Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to prepare you for your championship. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what that championship was. That championship was being homeless the following year after my book got published. Change your mind, change your life. It's sitting right over here in the back on my table. Change your mind, change your life. That's a moment that I just can't say that I'm going to preach what I practice. I have to practice what I preach. Everything is in that book is what changed my life, and I wrote about it. And I'm not going to sit here and promise and tell you that those same things are going to happen to you as well if you follow everything I said in my book. That's not what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to try to sell you the book, but I'm going to inspire you about what I wrote in the book. Because what I told you about Beaumont, Texas is where I started from in the book. The name of the chapter in that book is what's in the you have in the basement. And coming from Washington, D.C. to Florida, to Tampa, Florida, <laughs> no family here. All I knew was if I'm going to be homeless, let me be where it's going to be warm. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be on the street, <laughs> right? And I was so broke. B R O K and I could not afford to eat. <laughs> My credit was so bad. How many of you have gotten pre-approved letters when you got good credit? My credit was so bad I got pre-declined letters. <laughs> <laughs> I opened up the envelope. We know who you are. Don't think about applying. <laughs> so, folks, your circumstance doesn't have to determine your future. I met Lisa Nichols in 2012, shortly after my mom passed away. And I said to her, Lisa, I'm going to have an event, and you and I are going to share the stage. 2012. She said, well, make it happen. Just this past April, my company that I'm the CEO and the founder of called Wang Global, we just hosted the 2018 Tampa Bay Wealth Summit. Lisa Nichols was the keynote speaker. Don't believe me? Bring me more names. If it's going to be, it's up to me. That's exactly what I say when I open. The problem is, most people have, is thinking that.